In this video we'll be looking at the find the secret flag challenge on Hack the Box. It's a reverse engineering challenge in the medium difficulty and the description says find the secret flag and get the name of the creators of this challenge. So we download the files and extract the zip archive and we'll find this secret flag dot bin. Let's check the file type first of all and it's a 64-bit executable. Let's have a look at the strings. See not too much here, we've got some imports, we have a very super secret key, uh, some reference to temp secret and some output to the user, some prompts here as well. So let's go ahead and see if we can just run the application. Let's make it executable and run it. You can see we don't get any response at all here. Let's try and run Ltrace. And we can see what's actually happening. So there's a random, uh, the rand function is being used, generate a random int. We're calling fopen, trying to open the file temp secret, and we're getting minus two exit because temp secret doesn't exist. So let's touch uh, temp secret and run it again. And you see this time we get exit code status zero. So it's gone through these checks this time it's opened up temp secret it's tried to read from the file and then it's done this string comparison where it's comparing nothing to the very super secret key so let's open up our uh, uh, temp secret file and let's put very super secret key in there close it down let's try and run it again you can see this time we now have an exit code of one, so it successfully opened temp secret. It successfully compared these strings, but it still didn't get us anywhere interesting. So let's uh, let's try and open this up in Geardra and see if we can decompile the code and see what's going on behind the scenes. See what other conditions need to be met in order for us to get the flag. So we'll create a new project. Just call it find flag. And we will import the file. Just hit OK on everything, leave everything to the defaults. Double click on the file we want to disassemble. All the default analysis checks. And you see it's finished analyzing here. We don't actually have any functions showing at the moment. So in terms of determining where to start, we have an entry function here. We can see that there are some functions referenced, which we could double click and go and have a look at these functions. Another thing we could potentially do is just to go and search for strings and look and see, okay, where's our super secret keys used and where else do we have these prompts? So if we go to very super secret key and we'll see that it's referenced by these functions, so we double click on that and now we have this function where uh, some variables are defined, it tries to open temp secret. If it doesn't exist it gives us that exit minus two which we got at the beginning. If it does exist it's going to try and read some data from it and then it's going to compare the data that it's read, this local 78, to this very super secret key which is this string. And if it matches, if we get a zero there, then we get exit one. So that's where we've currently got to. If we go back here, we're at this exit code one because these two have matched. So what if those two don't match? If those two don't match, it's not going to exit. It's going to go to this condition instead, which is going to ask if if the if the characters of the bytes that it read from the file equal these values, then set uvar equal to one. If not set it equal to two and then uh, sorry sorry set set it equal to zero and then return so if we look over to the dis disassembly we can actually see that these values which are being compared are hex values for dead beef so rather than putting the super secret key in here let's go and try and add the dead beef to our temp secret let's remove it first of all temp secret and then let's do python dash c oh python python2 dash c and then we'll print backslash x oops backslash x d, d e backslash x ad backslash x 
B E backslash X E F. Print that to temp secret. And let's just try now and run L trace again. So last time we got our exit code uh, one. Okay. You see we've got some print Fs here. Some more print Fs. Okay, so let's try and run it without L trace. You see here it's printing out a value. Are you sure it's the right one? And if we keep running that, we'll get some different values. So let's go back to the code and see if we can determine what's going on. So we know that um, this function was called from that entry function. Uh, another, another thing we could do here is just try and find what references there are to that function. And then you can go and see where it's actually called. So in this case, we have it it's called down here, but there are some checks that are done beforehand. So we know that there was the rand and the srand function that was used. So we're generating a random number um, and essentially and essentially this random number is generated and then it's checking to see if the parameter we've entered is less than if we if we haven't entered a parameter here essentially it's going to assign the this value to equal a random value. Local 9 will e equal the random number that's generated unless we passed in uh, a parameter for it to use there. So it's going to do that and then it's going to call the this function AA which is our function to check the hex value. So let's go back. Now that we've, we've met that condition is true and now it's saying if it doesn't equal 0, which it doesn't, we know it equals 1, it's going to call then this function and let's have a look at the function. As you see the function here is taking in the parameters, it's looping through and printing out the values. So that's our loop here where it's printing out each of these values. And then finally we get the printout to say are you sure it's the right one. So let's go back again uh, and again. So the function's being called, it's being passed the local 9 variable, which is the random variable or the parameter that's been passed to the program. And it's also being passed the this dat variable. So if we go and have a look at the dat variable, you can see here that this one is equal exclamation mark, uh, sorry, asterisk, exclamation mark, etc. And you have this string here. We also have another string defined up here as well. Um, so let's let's see if if we go into this function where the XOR is being performed. Let's um, select the XOR instruction here, XOR. Let's grab the address, and we'll go and see if we can set a breakpoint and see if we can just see what's going on whenever this is running. Okay. Uh, let's open up GDB Pwn Debug and pass in the file. And then we want to set a breakpoint then at the address that we just grabbed. Make sure that's 0x. And let's open up our, let's get our code back just so we can see what's happening in the background here. And if we run that, you'll see that it, the first breakpoint we get is at this XOR operation and it's at that address that we just copied um, doing the XOR with the AL and the byte pointer at the RBP minus 10C. So let's um, have a look here. If we go info registers, you can see here the RAX, which is the where the AL resides, has a value of 14. We could try to cast that to a char, so we can do print char al and I'll try to print as a, an ASCII character we can have a look and see what's in what's what it's being XORed with so let's have a look at the value here let's do x over x rbp minus 0xc and you can see here we have a 7 in there let's try and print that as a string let's backslash a 
So let's hit continue and it's going to go through, it's looping through here doing this loop XOR in each of the values for that printf that we saw. So it's got to the second value now, let's have a look and see what we have in our AL. See we have an equals sign. So if we return here and see, let me see if we go back to where it was referenced here, it's been passed this dat, dat string, you can see here that the first character here is equals. So we have an equals in here, what do we have in our RBP? RBP we still have the backslash A, so let's hit continue, go to the next loop, and again print that char, we have an asterisk in our RBP we have the backslash A. So this is kind of what we would expect, it's just verifying that there is a random variable which is being a random value between 0 and 126 which is being XORed with each of these characters in that loop. If we were to pass in a parameter it should use that to, to perform the XOR rather than uh, rather than a random value. So if you keep running it randomly eventually you're probably going to get the actual flag um, you know, by the laws of probability, but um, that's obviously not the most efficient way to do this. So let's just confirm this. I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to run it again and I want to just have a look at the AL. You can see the AL is the same value. Have a look at the RBP. This time we have a hash in the RBP and if we hit continue for the next instruction, check the AL. We've got our equal sign which is the first thing to be in XORed. And if we check our RBP, we have this this hash sign. So it just confirms that that's being randomized each each time it loops. Now, if we go back to our code, we could, because we know this is a value between zero and 128, we can essentially just brute force this. So, if we take a copy of the byte string, which is going to be all these des the, these hexadecimal values here. And let's go to Cyberchef. I'll paste that in. And let's look for the XOR brute force option. We need to convert this first from hex into ASCII. So let's do from hex first. And then it does the conversion. You can see the key length, so we could change this if we wanted to brute force longer, but obviously the, the more you put it up, the longer it's going to take to try and brute force. We only need to brute force value of 1, so we loop, we, we go through, and then we basically want to look through from 0 to 126 um, to see if we have anything of interest. Okay, it's still showing all of the the, the key length three there. Um, okay, and scrolling through there, you'll see that we have a very super secret key with the key fifty eight. So let's let's get rid of our brute force and let's grab XOR. We know that the key is fifty eight in hex, so there we go, super secret key, it's 58 in hex. We could, um, one thing we could do here then is to try and see if we can pass as a parameter to the program. So if we do python 2-c print int and 0x58 I believe it was. 88, so let's try and run the program with 88. You can see we get the same value each time, so let's grab a copy of that and see if we can turn that off and just convert from hex. Okay, so we got the very super secret key. So if we put in the correct XOR value there, we did indeed get the correct key by default. So that's all that's all well and good. The program's running correctly, it's printing us out the correct value. Obviously that's not the value we we want because we're looking for the names of the authors. So let's return to the let's return to the code. 
and uh, we can have a look to see if there are any more references to the function. We have that one where we're passing in the dat 0060 Okay. I'm scrolling through here before. We had found found another similar function here. It's not quite the same function, but another similar function which is performing an XOR operation. And if we were to go and have a look at the the value here, you can see that it's defined as a local variable, this dat, instead of being passed in as a parameter down here like we saw in the other example. Let me see if I can actually go back and give a comparison. Um, show all references to. This is where the function was called, it was passed in this dat value. But you see we have another function somewhere else which isn't actually called, which is being passed in this value. So let's just grab that value and copy the byte string. Go back to Cyberchef and paste that in. And let's re-enable our XOR. And you can see here we have something that's starting to look like a name. Let's go back and see what we missed there. We missed a 3C at the beginning. Maybe a 2, 3, 3C, three 2, 3, 3C, three and there you have our flag. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this challenge. Any questions or comments, anything I missed um, or could have done differently or should have done differently, let me know, let me know um, down below. Thanks.